Hello, welcome to Tim Anderson Horse Training. Today we're going to talk about ground driving. Uh, some people call it long lining. Um, I'll refer to it as ground driving here in this video. We're going to talk about what it is, uh, what you use it for, uh, how to ground drive, and what we want to accomplish by ground driving. So when I'm starting a horse, a young horse, I want to make sure that I can control the direction we go in and how fast we get there before I ever get in the saddle. So I want to be able to control steering left, steering right, stop and back up before we get in the saddle. So that's what I use ground driving for and we're going to start by sacking this colt out to the lines. We want to make sure he's comfortable with the driving lines. So I'm going to just take him swinging around just a little bit, wait for him to settle. His ears are flicking around, he's not locked on him too tight. So I'm liking what I'm seeing here to start with. I'm going to, these ground line, ground driving lines are going to be all over his body. They'll be around his legs, his hips, his neck. So I want to make sure that he is not worried about the lines. If he's worried about the ground driving lines, he's not going to learn what I'm wanting to teach him. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure he's not worried about the ground driving lines hitting him all over his body. And basically what I use for ground driving is just two lunge, lunge lines. Um, you'll see here in a minute I've got one that's orange and one that's yellow just so I can talk about which one is on which side of the horse. So here I'm sacking the horse out with the line, making sure he's not worried about it all over his body, his neck, his legs, his hip. And it seems comfortable with everything on the left hand side. So we'll turn him around and do the same thing on the right hand side. Get him turned around here so you can see this side and see how he does. Start by the same way. Make sure he's okay with it around his legs. And as you see, I'm, I'm not really taking any great pains with the lunge lines. I expect him to be broke to them. I'm not going to act like there's something to be afraid of. I'm going to give him a little bit of slack right there on the line that I'm holding him with. I'm not going to hold him in place. If he wants to leave, I'll let him leave and then we'll just make leaving be harder work than standing here. Right now it's pretty easy to stand here and let me swing the lines all around him. There it's on his hips, his back legs. And just make sure he's comfortable with the ground lines, the driving lines touching him all over his body, up under his belly. When we start moving around, they're going to be all over him. So I want to make sure that he's comfortable with that. All right, so he's comfortable with him touching his sides. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to throw the, low, the ground line over him. This will be, I'll be doing this when I'm getting started to get both lines on the same side. I want to make sure he's comfortable with everything. You notice I'm not standing right in front of him. At any point here, I'm standing to the side so that if he does spook and run off, he has a place to go that's not going over me. So throw it over that side again. I like how he's standing. Let me work with the ropes one more time. Now what I want to do is make sure that he'll follow his nose and follow the line. So I'll take and flip it over his hips. I want it to be just above his hocks. Apply a little bit of pressure and he follows his nose around and follow the line. Good boy. Pet on him just a little bit. Now we'll do it again. I want to make sure that he follows the line to each direction before I start driving him. Again, I'll throw it over his back. Flip it over his hips. I want it down, hung up on that. There we go. Over his hip and ask him to step around. There we go. Good job. He's soft and relaxed. He's licking. His ears are flicking around watching me. He's tail is not locked down. He's moving around there. He even has a foot cocked. I'm going to do this work in both directions. Now I'll ask him to turn to the left. And 
follow his nose to the left. Now he's, he can see me out of his right eye there. He's naturally going to want to come to me on his right eye, but the lunge line is asking him to go left. So I want him to follow that line to the left, even though he sees me out of the right eye. Good job. And you saw the line get under the stirrup there and I flicked it off. I'll talk more about that in just a minute. could slide it over his ears like this instead of throwing it over him that would give him a little bit more practice like putting the bridle on rubbing it over his ears want to make sure that he's okay with everything if he's afraid of the line I'm not going to be able to teach him to work the line step back around to the left like what I'm seeing here. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and attach the, both driving lines so that I can start driving. Now what I'm going to do, you see I have a snaffle bit on over the halter. I have a rope halter and then just a plain smooth snaffle. I'm not going to attach the bit, the line to the bit what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to attach it to the rope halter through the bit. It's attached to the halter through the bit. That's going to give me a little bit of movement on the bit so that he starts understanding the pull on the bit. But I'm actually going to be pulling on the rope halter. So that will keep his mouth soft and keep it fresh so that when I do get in the saddle and I start asking him to work off the bit, I still have a fresh mouth. I'm not going to be dulling the mouth down here, pulling on the bit. I'll actually be pulling on the halter. So now we'll get the orange line thrown over the, his back on the right hand side. You can see the yellow line is on the left. <coughs> and what I'll do is I'll take and flip that orange line down over his hips and ask him to walk off. Now, I don't run the lines through the stirrups. A lot of people do, I don't. And the reason being is, if he was to get scared and run off, what this does, it allows me to basically just lunge him around me. And if that yellow line was going through the stirrup, I wouldn't be able to get him to lunge around me. So I like to keep the lines this way. It takes a little bit more practice to learn to drive, but uh, it works better for me. Now you'll also notice I don't stand right behind the horse. I want him to be able to see me out of both eyes. Now we flip around. Now he's looking at me out of the right eye. Now looking at me out of the left eye. Get him going a little bit more forward. I'm going to use the same verbal cues that I use. I'm going to use when I'm in the saddle. I use a tick, a smooch. Um, get him to start responding to those cues to move forward. Now you'll see here, I'll get the lunge line under the stirrup leather. You see how that long orange line is under the stirrup? What I'm going to do here is I want to get him used to stuff flapping on the side. So I just took that orange line and just flipped the stirrup out, pull the line out from under it, and that lets the stirrup flap on the side. And that helps to get him broke to my legs or anything else flapping to his sides. So it just helps to get the horse a little bit broker. So we're going to just kind of drive around here. I'm out to the side a pretty good bit right here. This horse has been driven a little bit. Sometimes when you first start, you basically start from lunging and then you have to kind of work in so you're a little bit more behind the horse where you can actually steer both directions. Now you'll see I got my left, my right hand up high. I want to make sure that line doesn't get down around his feet. I'd like to keep it down, keep it around his hocks. Ask him to 
up here. Whoa, that wasn't too bad. And a little bit of back. See, I get one step, and then I give him a little bit of slack, and then I'll ask for another step. Good. I want to make sure I can control left, right, stop, and back up before I get in the saddle. Step to the left, pull the right rein, ask him to walk off again. So as we're driving, you're going to see that I do a lot of turning turning left, turning right. When I get in the saddle, sometimes with the horse, they see you out of one eye and then you change directions and they see you out of the other eye. It scares them just a little bit. So I do a lot of that going back and forth. I want to make sure both sides are equally broke. There he kind of jumped just a little bit. Not quite sure what he jumped at. We'll go back to driving again, see what we can figure out. Need to get that out of him. I really, of course, you can't get everything out of uh, the horse on the ground. You have to get in the saddle, but I want to get him as nice as I can, keep it as safe as I can for me when I get up in the saddle. So we'll walk around some more. Going off to the right here. You see he's pulling on me a little bit there. Take note of that. I'm going to work on that here in a minute. Is he's getting a little bit stiff. I notice he gets stiff, especially when I pull on the right rein. Not as much to the left. You notice him. Watch his head. Sometimes it kind of comes up. He gets a little bit stiff. I'd really like to get all that worked out of him. Seems more comfortable going to the left than he does the right. Just something to take note of. Let's see, I raise my right hand to keep that right rein up. Jumped again. Now, if you jump that way, I want to make the bad behavior, the behavior that I don't want, more work than the good behavior. So right there, he jumped a little bit. I'm going to lunge him around me. This is one of the benefits of not running the lines through the stirrups. I can go right into lunging. And see, I'm shaking the right rein there to ask him to go. Just like when you're in the saddle, your inside rein controls bend, outside rein controls speed. Uh, like in a, uh, for instance, the outside rein controls the shoulder, the outside rein makes the outside shoulder lock into the inside hip. If you watch some of my spin videos, I talk a good bit about how the outside rein influences the inside hip. So right there, just to get him to, to move out forward, I shook the outside rein, kept the inside rein with a little bit of contact, kept him bent to the inside, and lunged him around a little bit, kind of made that spook a little bit of work. So I want to encourage the right behavior discouraged the wrong behavior. There he did it again. We're going to lunge. Okay, he's pulling on me pretty good there. We're going to lunge to the right. Make that a little bit of work. Keep him going to the right. Ooh. Okay, keep him going to the right. No matter what he does, I'm just going to keep sending him forward. Make work out of it. Send him forward. Go around me to the left, to the right now. Keep his nose bent to the right, send him forward with the left. Make it into a little bit of work. I mean, basically, I'm just encouraging the correct behavior, discouraging the wrong behavior. Now, you notice that left rein might be up under his tail pretty close. I'm not going to be concerned about that. If it gets under his tail and he don't like it, I wanna, that's one more thing to get him broke to. I might be out trail riding one day and, and get a limb caught under his tail. I want him to know that it's there, know that it's okay, it's not going to hurt him, and one more thing to get him broke to. Now, 
start gathering my slack up on the reins, kind of work up the reins just a little bit. Ask him to slow down just a little bit of contact. Good. Now we'll see if we can go back to driving. Basically, I'm giving him two options. He can he can walk and drive, or he can trot or lope and lunge. Make the options black and white. doing the same thing I was doing before. Just walk to the left, turn to the right. Yeah, it's good as a little bit, but it wasn't as bad that time. Neck still got stiff. So that tells me when I get in the saddle and I apply right rein pressure, that's a good chance that's what I'm gonna get. That time it wasn't bad, but you saw earlier it was, it was pretty excessive. Turning to the left. Good. And you notice right there, I flipped the rein, flipped the stirrup off, flipped the stirrup leather. He don't seem too bothered with that. That's good to know. If he jumps while I'm in the saddle, like he's jumping driving, and my leg bumps him, I want him, I want to know that that's not going to upset him worse. Seems like he's really wanting to stop here. I'm not going to let him stop. I want him to keep going. Just like I said earlier, I want to control speed and direction. Speed isn't necessarily slowing him down. Sometimes speed is making him go. that time his neck didn't get stiff it didn't go up there we're going back and forth and you notice that at no point I don't ever stay right directly behind him and I don't I'm never close enough that I'm within kicking distance I'm always far enough back that if he kicks he's not going to hit me and I'm always going to stand just off to one side or the other I don't stand right behind him I want him to know where I'm at I want him to see that where I'm at if I'm right behind him, he's not going to be able to see me. There we go. Send him forward a little bit. He's turning both directions a little bit better than what he was earlier. Needs a little bit more go, though. And think of the go. Not wanting to go is a form of resistance. If I'm asking the horse to go, and he's not going. That's actually a little bit of resistance. Earlier, when I asked him to go, he went too much. That's resistance. That's a way of telling me no. And here, I'm asking him to go and he's not wanting to. That's a form of resistance and telling me no also. So that needs to be worked out just as much as if he was running off. I need to control speed, whether that speed is go fast or go slow, I want to be able to control that. So right there, he was kind of telling me, no, I'm going to send him out a little bit, get a little bit of go into him. I control speed and direction. That's, that's my objective right here with ground driving. When I do get in the saddle, basically the only thing that's different is I'm in the saddle doing the same thing, pointing his nose, asking him to get go. I'll control the direction by pointing his nose and control the speed. There, I'm shaking that outside rein, asking him to go a little bit. See, now right there, he has that shoulder poked out going to the left. I can apply a little bit of the yellow rein, the outside rein, right there. See, I'm lifting my hand. Applying that rein, that's just like supporting rein, supporting the shoulder, bring the shoulder back in, and then I have control of that shoulder again. That's another way of telling me no. He was poking that shoulder out and going off to the side instead of forward. So we've, we've tried spooking and running off. We've tried going too, 
slow, not wanting to go. We've tried poking the shoulder out, not wanting to go. So I think we've worked through several different ways of him trying to tell me no. Now that was a good stop. I like that. Now see, I, I have my hands up again. I want to make sure that they don't get tangled up in his feet. And if they do, it's no big deal. I just kind of work them out. And I'm gathering my reins up. I think this is going to be a good place to stop for today. Good boy. I want to thank you for watching today, my video on ground driving. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the question box below. And be sure to look for my other training videos. Thanks for watching.